America, a strong democratic country, stands as one of the most powerful forces. But with that, we need a strong military standing. What is our history of the federal government's power to wage war? Well, in the beginning of our nation's government, like when the Founding Fathers created the Constitution, some people argued that the President had the power to declare war. This is simply not true. They stated in the Constitution, specifically Article 1, Section 8, that Congress has the power to declare war. However, in Article 2, Section 2, it names the President as the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. Having only one person in charge of warfare could lead to a Hitler situation. Now, let's dive into the grit and grime of our nation's history on the power to wage war. On December 8, 1941, Japan makes an attack on Pearl Harbor. The day after Pearl Harbor, President Franklin asked the Congress to declare war against Japan. In the Constitution, it states, Congress shall have the power to declare war. In this scenario, that's exactly what they did. The President just acted as Commander-in-Chief of Army. However, this was the last time that took place. In 1964, the citizens and the President wanted to have a war with Vietnam, but we knew Congress would not support the war. So President Johnson did what he thought was necessary and sent ships to North Vietnam. And as a result, as a result North Vietnam started shooting at the ships. Because of this, Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which allows the President to send troops with limited congressional approval. Flash forward a few years to 1973. Just when we thought the power to wage war was all settled, our nation was jolted once again. The War Powers Act of 1973 can be divided into six sections and no one wants to go over all of them. So here's the gist. Congress has the power to declare war and the president will act as chief of military when a war is declared or an attack is made on the U.S. The president should consult with Congress when sending U.S. troops anywhere. And when I was reviewing this rule, there seemed to be a common theme, 60 days. There are requirements for a president to meet when sending troops anywhere. These are vital because they can trigger a 60-day limit on the U.S. forces. Troops must be brought home after 60 days unless Congress has agreed to keep them there. Finally, if any part of the law is considered invalid, the rest of the act will remain valid. As you may have guessed, this resolution caused a bit of controversy, particularly from the executive branch. They said that this takes away their power. However, what power did they even have? I mean, it seems that this act just reiterated constitutional powers of the president, that they are not declarers of war, but chief of military. Now, just when you thought we had covered it all, another conflict came into light in 2001. This was called the Authorization for Use of Military Force Against Terrorists. This took place after 9-11. It is a joint resolution agreed upon by House of Representatives, the Senate, and Congress that states the President shall take measures necessary to exercise rights of self-defense. This meaning the President can take measures necessary to, pr to protect our citizens here and abroad from terrorist attacks. This act gave the President more power than the previous resolutions. This bill still withstands today and can be good if used responsibly. So what do you think about the U.S. history of power to wage war? Well, in the Constitution, it states that Congress has the power to declare war. 
But in 2001, the president was given the power to take necessary actions against terrorist attacks. What does that mean exactly? The president now is able to declare war on a nation attacking. Now, this can also be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the circumstances. The power to wage war has been an ongoing controversial topic in our government and now it is somewhat clear to our understanding. Constitutionally, Congress can declare war. However, now since 2001, the president may also declare war under certain circumstances. That is the history of the power to wage war. Thank you.